Now, it was mentioned to me that these chairs might make a better trade if I found an inexpensive table to go along with them. Thank you to whomever commented that. It's a good idea. Now, it just so happens I have with me that very thing. This is an IKEA table that I found in the in a dumpster a while back and I've had sitting in the garage. It's the grain ass grain ass set. Um, but it didn't have the glass. I guess the glass broke when they were bringing it home or something. Um, for whatever reason, they threw the entire thing out. All the pieces in the box except the hardware. However, the great thing about IKEA is that if you go to their service desk, you can replace any of the hardware that your set might be missing. And I wasn't sure, but it turns out that yes, they will replace entire kits. They didn't have them in stock, so they actually mailed them to my house for free. So, uh, that just leaves one thing. The top. <laughs> That's the only piece we're gonna need right now. This is the top. At first I thought there was some sort of a little indent or lip or something that things would sit into, but apparently not. I guess it just had a glass top, little rubber feet that sat in there, and then it just kind of stuck on top. I saw a clever design on the interwebs, of all places, where somebody had just taken a bunch of two by sixes and rebuilt the top using that. So we're not reinventing the wheel here. This makes it a little easier. One, two, three, four, five, six. I think if you just imagine those straight across, that should look pretty good. So what's the next step? We're gonna need some lumber. I've got a list, we're at the hardware store. Let's load up. Holy cow, what is expensive? Little bit. Yeah, to make this table, uh, those two by sixes would have cost me $30, which doesn't seem crazy, and if that was all it was gonna cost me, that would have been fine, but I just spent $50 on stain, and... No, actually, it would have been... It would have been more than I felt like spending, when I'd already spent 50 bucks on all the stains and uh, polyurethane and those sorts of things, so... It would be like $110, and you don't have to. Yeah, rather than spending almost 100 bucks on uh, materials for a table that's probably only worth 100 bucks, scavenge the materials and yes I was being careful not to find treated wood you can see that one's all green and it's treated but these ones are not so that'll be fine the trick is like I'm hoping these are long enough if they're not we'll just have to go the other way on the table which will be fine I suppose it just means more cuts uh. and more Well, we, no, we just need more boards, but we wouldn't need more length. It's still the same area we're covering. All right, after having some lunch and changing into some work-appropriate attire, I checked the boards that I've managed to collect, and I think I'll be good. Uh, these I was collecting for a while now because I've had that table sitting around for a little while. Um, now, although it would be convenient to just spend the money and come home with some fresh, clean boards cut exactly to length, uh, this is more fun. Also a lot cheaper. So, now I'm gonna need six of them. This one's no good because it's got a really big crack in it, but I can still use it as a straight edge to line my cuts up. And I counted out one, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now before getting crazy with the really fun stuff, I better double, triple check. There's no hardware, just sitting left in these boards. There's a couple big ones on the end here. Whoops. Get that one out by hand. No big deal. Screw heads are all full of dried concrete. The joys of reclaimed materials. Alright, I think I got all of the screws out, save for one because unfortunately I knocked it a little hard with the hammer and uh, I guess the draw strength on screws is a lot tougher than the uh, shearing strength so 
it just kind of came right off. I'll just have to hide that inside. Whatever. So the next step. What is the next step? Oh yeah, we're gonna want nice flat ends. Hold up. Now I definitely want these boards to all have right angles on the end so they line up nicely. So what I've done is taken these two benches and I'm setting the boards on those with something that I know is cut at 90 degrees to mark the line. Now I figure the easiest way to get these lines straight is to use this 1x4 as a guide. Make sure it's the same distance. Got our safety glasses, which I found in the trash. The circ saw, found in the trash. Still works! Terrible job. Red plus green equals what? Unfortunately, this saw is terrible and it doesn't work with uh, my plan for a guide, which sucks because I thought that was really clever. I need a better tool. Okay, so it turns out my garbage uh, saw is trash. That's the uh, the long and short of it. But um, my buddy Logan is a, a bit of a professional these sorts of things so uh, he was happy to come and help and I'm so grateful because it looks like this is going to turn out <laughs> a lot better doing it properly. And then we gotta get two out of this one That's six boards. Perfect. Thanks, Logan. Thumbs up. Champion. Oh, man. Uh. What, Thub? Is it heavy? Uh, a little bit. One sturdy table. I'll tell you what. So glad Logan came by. Sometimes, figuring out the right way to do things means getting a hold of somebody who knows what they're doing. And I'm glad I knew somebody who knew what he was doing. Now we've got six perfectly straight cuts of wood. They're beautiful. So next we gotta prep this, cause uh, these are, some of them are, some of them are reclaimed concrete form, so that's gotta come off. Actually, I mean, all of this wood is pretty, pretty garbage, but I'm not that worried. I think it'll be fine. Just. Time for the dust fest! Okay, so there's this screw that got sheared off when it's trying to remove it. So now we're just gonna have to do our best to bury it. It's not working super good. Not really surprised. All right. Maybe. Blah, blah, blah. So, you're trying to bury it or to get it out? Well, the easiest way would be to bury it, but unfortunately it's a screw and its strength is in that it doesn't push in or pull out easily. So... Let's go, sub. That's a long screw! Yeah, that's why I'm surprised and ecstatic that this worked. Sweet. That's crazy. Kind of chewed up my grips a little bit, but hey, what do you do? Look at that. Just gonna take the chisel, remove all this dried concrete. Okay. Don't hit us, don't hit us, don't hit us. Ooh. All right. I hope this works. I hope 60 grit was the right choice. Let's find out. Bob, is it doing the thing? I mean, it is, but I should have gotten a, a coarser grit. This is going to take forever. Okay, we'll be back when this is done. Oh, I doubt this is taking a long time. Yep. Probably be done by the end of next week. 
reclaiming wood is great, but I wouldn't suggest um, concrete forms because concrete dust is definitely bad for you. I don't know how, I think it's maybe lye or something. It's really bad for you. But if it ever does come up in your life, definitely use some kind of filter to maybe breathe a little less of it in. Using an orbital sander with 160, uh, even with 60 grit, or grid as it's traditionally intended to mean, um, takes forever. I knew it was going to take forever, but it's really, really taking forever. I picked up some of this 40 grit, threw it on a block, and we've been uh, going at it by hand. Gee, this is fun. But you know what? It's turning out all right after this. You know, work you end up with this. Let's get some exposure set up proper. Yeah, so you end up somewhere here, and then it ends up coming out real nice. Look at that color. Look at how, yeah. Oh, see, not bad. Still got a long, long way to go. You sure know how to sand a good wood, my man. I do know how to handle wood. Yeah. I hate everything about this. Every little thing. Ow. Ow. But hey, you can't argue with results. And that stance, the. <laughs> okay. We're back inside. I didn't love every moment of that, but it's done now. It's getting kind of stormy and windy out there, so we're going to uh, move on to the next phase, which is assembly. So this is the original frame from the IKEA grain ass piece, and I'm just kind of lining it up to get an idea, sort of a visual guide for where to put these. These are braces that I actually scavenged off of a different table, which was all broken apart. <laughs> They're unfortunately the nicest pieces of wood that this table is going to be made out of. These are um, birch? No. Yes, birch, which made them a lot harder to sand, but I think I got them down relatively... I don't know. This one's not perfect. This one's not perfect, but I hope it takes a stain okay. That one looks a little better. So those are the pieces that are going to hold the whole thing together. Now, I'm going to measure, mark, drill, and uh, screw everything down. I'm going to put, press it into mark. Now I'm using drywall screws. Not that they're the best, but I have these much nicer ones, but I don't have enough uh, to do every single one of them. So if this is going to look its best, the screws better at least match. wanted to use the holes that these cross bracers already had. Now I'm going to drill a bunch more holes, put in a bunch more screws. This should work great. Now I'm going to drill a bigger hole through this just so that I don't end up screwing the, the screws into it as much as these because I don't know it's just not important to me. So I'm going to set the depth by using this as a guide, adding a piece of masking tape. And I'll just try not to drill any deeper than that. Yeah, I do that far too often. Yeah, because you push the red button to like turn the thing on. I'll give them all a hand tighten just to make sure they're nice and snug, but I didn't want to go too hard. Now quickly vacuum up our mess. Now let's see uh, what we've done. I know the holes are not evenly spaced, but they're evenly strong. Oh, that's not too, too heavy. No, ah. 
totally not a picnic table. And it doesn't look like I burst through with any of the screws. I was a little worried about that. The nice thing about using this uh, reclaimed wood is that it's pretty much as dry and cracked as it's ever going to get because it's really old. So uh, as long as I don't damage it, it should stay just the way I finish it for a long time. Okay, now to the next phase. Now, I wish we could say we were done the sanding, but we're almost done sanding. I'm just going to grab a soft block and 220. This will just get rid of any of those uh, leftover scratches so that it looks nice and they don't all pop up after we get some stain on. I think it looks really nice. Can't even see Durant. This sunshine. Wow. Right. So, we're going to start with the bottom. Dust is your enemy, tack cloth is your friend. Just gonna give it a quick once over to make sure there's no no specks ready to jump into our nice finish. Some wood conditioner. Oh yeah, you always need to condition your wood, bud. <laughs> oh yeah, full send. That's not gonna be good. I hope that tastes good. Stir well before and during use. Oops. Let penetrate for 5 to 15 minutes. Remove excess with a clear dry cloth. Apply a stain like Minwax wood finish anytime within 2 hours after the application. Penetrate for five minutes, nice. Yeah, five to fifteen minutes of penetration. Oh, nice. Nowadays I'm too cold for a girlfriend. Nowadays I don't know when the world spins. If your life, I'll be dying when the world ends. It's alright every time we fucking break a sweat. Let's try not to get this all over ourselves. Ooh, that looks good. Look at that. Now you can't really see it. Now that is looking sick. Hey, Durant, help me flip this thing. That's not good, because I haven't conditioned it yet. Couple blotches, we gotta move quick because I don't want that to be too, too patchy looking. I'm back on that conditioner tip. Looking fine as frick. Wait four to six hours before applying a second coat. I guess we'll follow the instructions. Okay, it's been some hours. Let's go for round two. Quinn's got here, so I'm gonna get his help flipping it. Put this down on the table underneath it. I'd say that's looking really fine. Now we just need to wait um, a million hours before we apply the polyurethane. Worth it. It is the next day and it's dry. Not bad. I'm supposed to stir this, eh? All right. The 
this stuff has a has a smell to it for sure. Some of which are definitely little specks of this and that. <clears throat> oh, I don't know. We'll see. Hold on. Be right back. This time is going to pass a lot quicker for you than it is for me. All right, I flipped it. Here we go, round two. All right. Almost final stage. Now it's time for the full assembly. I think this is the right packet. <coughs> I don't know. You know what, I'm just gonna assume you guys don't actually wanna watch me put together Ikea furniture. If, uh, for those of you who do, apologies. You know, you do what you gotta do. Boom, there it is. I have no idea what these are. Not a clue. Now let's just, uh, just get rid of that. And then without putting pressure on the legs, just like grab the end. Yeah. Quick little sand with the 220. I'm not going hard. We're just trying to remove any little specks that might have ended up landing. Now we hit it with the tack cloth. Okay, you get the idea. And now at long, long last, it's time for the final coat. Not bad. It's not quite, you know, not quite dried up. But, see, that looks pretty solid. And it's got this little thingy under here, mostly just to add support, but, uh, I don't know, you could stash stuff on there if you wanted to. Now, I've got one finishing touch, and I totally stole this off the internet, but it's gonna look good. I've got a pack of these here. Furniture nails. And uh, these ones might have been the wrong choice because they're clearly the kind that people have seen on furniture before, but I think they'll look good on this too. So that's the sun we've got right now. Yeah. These fires are crazy right now. Just to make sure I can line them up perfectly. Hmm. Durant likes it. Here it is with, uh, with these chairs. I mean, I only brought one around. I'd say it matches all right. I did my best. I'd say I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. Uh, as cheap as possible though? I don't know, let's add up the cost. We had um, $55 in finishing uh, material. I already had the tack cloth. Money. So $40 worth of sandpaper. Um, and I already had the other junk. And nothing for the wood. So, uh, total cost here is 40 plus 55, that was 95 bucks, but I still have um, pretty much an entire thing of these. A little over half of the sandpaper left. There's about half of each of the polyurethane and the uh, stain left. So I used about half the materials total. I guess from 95 that puts my total cost at 47.50. Call it 50 bucks. So that was fifty dollars. Um, if I were to do it again, or if any of you are thinking about doing a tabletop in the near future, um, this was just me being me. I strongly suggest you just buy the freaking wood. Thirty bucks to save yourself four days of sanding. That's a great value. Not to mention they would have cut it to length. You still would have had to sand it, but. Um, as an alternative, I would never do this project again without a belt sander. Compared to the time that I put into it, belt sander, not that expensive. And if I find one, I'm gonna keep it, I'm gonna fix it, I don't care what's wrong with it, I'll figure it out. I'd say it looks pretty good though. You should definitely get Durant to sell it though, he thinks it's amazing, I think it's okay. At this point, after all that work, I'm gonna start high. I'll probably put it on Kijiji with the chairs for like $800 or open to offers and see what happens. Um, if somebody gives me $200 for this table, I would be stoked, but if somebody gave me 120, I guess I'd let it go. Why am I telling you this? One thing's for certain though, we have definitely left this table better than we found it. Keep doing the thing. You know I wanna let you